Dr. Christy Lamb. I am a co-founder and CEO of Bold Health in uh, Encinitas, California. We are a full spectrum uh, mental health clinic. We specialize in uh, addiction treatment, uh, but also do general full spectrum uh, psychiatric care. Actually through John Fredrickson, who is uh, one of the world leaders in intensive short-term dynamic psychotherapy. And our clinic, uh, our intensive outpatient program for addiction is founded in the fundamental principles of ISTDP. Uh, so I connected with John uh, a number of years ago, reached out to him about the possibility of incorporating this traditionally individual therapy into a group therapy modality. Um, and he, we were off to the races to starting a program and a curriculum. And one of the things that he really found to be imperative was working directly with patients with substance abuse problems, but really primary mental health in general to regulate anxiety. That um, for most people, they don't even realize how anxious they are and that um, they're often in a level of anxiety where they really can't even do deeper therapy because their brain's not even completely online. And so biofeedback uh, was recommended as kind of imperative for having patients have the tools to regulate their anxiety, to decrease cravings in regard to uh, substance use. And so John had been working with um, what was Wild Divine, now Unite, um, in uh, previously. Um, he uses it personally and um, just highly recommended and made the connection. And so uh, from the integration of our program, our curriculum actually um, has clear spots for our, our patients come in uh, at the beginning of the day. They start with biofeedback. We end groups with biofeedback. So it's a well-integrated part of our program, and it's made uh, a big difference in regard to um, uh, anxiety regulation before patients even come into the groups mm -hmm. so that they're regulated. They're in just a little bit lower space because we know that coming to treatment in and of itself is, I mean, it's the reason we're called Bold Health, is it's a courageous step to say, I'm going to look in, I'm going to really kind of address what's going on. And to do that is anxiety provoking. So walking in the front door uh, heightens people's anxiety. So to be able to come in and be able to use uh, the biofeedback program to uh, kind of just bring things down a notch, to start to have an awareness about oh gosh, when I walk into this place, I'm a little bit elevated. I might not be popped to a panic attack, but just starting to notice um, and then be able to auto-regulate during groups because they can notice. So I feel that a little bit. And I, you know, I, noticing the biomarkers kind of on the, on the program has been really helpful for, you know, initially people are, are frustrated. They, they get a little bit, uh, yeah. because they're not used to noticing, they're not used to paying attention and they're used to pushing through their anxiety until they're already over threshold. And so using the program has been really helpful. I would say that um, the uh, most patients that come in initially are resistant, <laughs> do not want to do it. <laughs> um, and we try to really um, encourage, give this a week, give this um, a week to just, even if you want to be crawling out of your skin, leaving the room, because so many people, when they first, they're so habitually used to not looking at what's going on in their bodies, not used to looking at their anxiety, that when they first start to look, they get freaked out. And so they get anxious over their anxiety. And so we'll often, I mean, it's great that the program has the ability to kind of turn the numbers off to start with. So that first they can just kind of get used to being in the room, get used to hearing the voices, get used to uh, kind of just paying attention to their breath based on the guided meditation. And then we can start to integrate the numbers and, and kind of paying attention and people can get a little competitive with themselves and notice that that in and of itself increases their anxiety. But um, initially, usually people feel worse and then feel remarkably better. And we warn people about this because they're so used to not paying attention that paying attention uh, can feel really uncomfortable because they're actually noticing how anxious they've been for so long. If they can stick with it, stick with the noticing and allow to get past the place to then regulate. Um, we've had people who, after our program, then say, hey, can I come in and still use the biofeedback? And we had offer it to all of our individual pro patients, whether they're in the program or not, that people can come in. And we have a suite filled with um, the IOMs and uh, iPads so that people can come in during the day and regulate when they need to. Um, and it's been a wonderful resource for our patients. 
Great question. And, you know, um, one of our uh, providers um, who um, is in recovery herself and mindfulness was the core of her uh, recovery. It meant um, really paying attention to um, where she was in her body. So much of addiction becomes a, um, a, a mindless, impulsive act that something's going on in relationships in uh, external stressors that bring up a bunch of feelings that make us anxious. And then we go to anything to distract away, whether that's substances or social media or food or work, you know, whatever it is. And so being able to be mindful of that anxiety as the actual craving or trigger um, really helps people regulate um, their going to, you know, in our world, we call it defenses and substance abuse being just one of those defenses. And, um, you know, I don't know enough about as far as why right now it's been such a boom. I, I mean, I, I would attribute part of it to the hip and coolness of yoga right now that, I mean, being able to go to a 24-hour fitness and people talking about mindfulness and yoga being integrated, I think that, you know, there's, there, there's a positive and a negative spin to that, right? That you're, you know, bumping it out to your warrior one. Um, but people are, are it, it is becoming more mainstream to talk about mindfulness. I think that uh, a lot of major celebrities and uh, powerful uh, business leaders are talking about seeing massive changes in their productivity, in their um, personal lives through the integration of meditation and mindfulness. Um, I think that in medicine, there has been a huge growth of re hardcore research showing the cardiovascular effects, um, the effects on autoimmune diseases. Um, and I think that, you know, that's really what uh, the Chris Small and I that are, uh, we're, are both board certified in family medicine and psychiatry and really look at this integration of primary mental health in relation to primary health issues. And that's actually our next frontier here at, at Bold is working on medically unexplained symptoms, somatization, chronic pain, and integration of anxiety, high stress, not being able to pay attention and regulate our bodies and how that can play a role in probably all of the top 10 causes of death. Um, and, and, and medical issues. So, um, you know, uh, I think there's been multiple different influences to bring mindfulness into the forefront. Um, and I would probably say the other piece is that when you do it, uh, you can't help start preaching about it. <laughs> the, the, you know, the effect is so profound. And I think that those of us who have integrated it into our own personal lives, into our clinical work, um, the difference between the patients that are doing it and, and aren't is so profound that it spreads pretty quickly to become, you know, it's like you've drank the Kool-Aid of, of meditation. And I mean, how can you not, uh, you know, it's, it's cost effective, it's non-invasive, it's something that people can do on their own, uh, no medication involved and has, you know, really significant effects. I think the hardest part is, is getting people to buy in that, they, that, it, that they're worth taking the time to look in, that it's safe to look and see what's inside um, and helping people feel comfortable. And I think that the graded effect that you can have with the Unite program for the biofeedback um, really allows us to kind of do that in a gentle way. So for some people, we must may turn off all of the uh, markers and just start with a guided meditation. And then maybe turn on the markers with the guided meditation and then go to the game. Uh, you know, some people starting with the game, um, we did that a little bit because it was nice to have people be able to do kind of short bursts if they needed to. And they would just, it was too competitive. They were competing with themselves and getting all up in their heads. I can't do this. And so it's, I think that's a great thing about the program is that you can kind of um, uh, tailor it to where your patient may be in regard to how open they are to looking in and open they are to, to the process. You know, I think the other piece is that we are in a world that is so fast paced now with constant input from emails and social media and phones available all the time, you know, uh, the, the, the demise of the pay phone where you'd actually have to go somewhere to get a call, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I think that we're so inundated with information that people, are, you know, I, I hear now of retreats where you go where no cell phones, no, you know, going back to basics. And so creating, sp I think people are dying to have space to just breathe to just calm their minds and that we need it more than ever um, mm -hmm. in today's day and age. Um, we're just inundated with information and imagery and marketing and all this stuff. And so um, I think that people are uh, 
th just uh, kind of uh, dying to have it. I mean, I think the component that makes it not just meditation, but biofeedback is imperative. That um, uh, there is something so important about patients, clients, uh, humans, being able to feel a sense of agency and efficacy that if I do something, it makes a difference. So one of the biggest barriers, I mean, everybody can breathe. Um, it's amazing how many people, you know, when I recommend it, say, like, you want them to breathe all day long? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you actually have to. Uh, you'll do it whether you want to or not. Um, but that um, the sense of I can intervene is really important. So what I've found is that one of the biggest barriers to people regulating their anxiety is not that they don't know what to do. There's some people who have never... Uh, done a breathing technique, that kind of thing, or had been exposed. It's more rare now as we're talking about this, you know, it's more mainstream. The bigger barrier is I have yogis and people who are excellent at breath work, who struggle to actually intervene when they're anxious, because looking when they're in a heightened state of anxiety is so frightening, or they feel like they can't do anything to regulate it. So sitting in the morning when they're not anxious and doing a meditation feels great, and it has long-term effects throughout the day, but then they may wake up at three in the morning and say, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, well, you, did you meditate? Be like, did you do that same thing that you did in the morning? No, what, should I do it then? I'm like, right, so you know, the analogy I often use is, um, you know, being able to dribble, dribble, spin, follow through in the middle, uh, practice your free throw when the gym is quiet, when you're alone, and then being able to do it in the midst of a championship game, you know, you have to practice to be able to, but the goal is actually to do it in the game, is to, to do this when you're, when you're in the midst of the stress. And I think that you have to have the experience of knowing that you're actually doing something effective. And I think the biofeedback markers give people a sense of, wow, if I paid, yeah, initially my coherence score, my resonance went completely off track. And then when I really paid attention and I started breathing, I could see my numbers go up and I could see that I can have an effect in this. And I think that that sense of efficacy is so important because we won't look if we don't think we can do anything about it. If we think that meditation is kind of a magical thing that we do, that we dose one time in the morning of doing it and it'll last all day long, um, it, it's not as tangible of a one-to-one, -one, I'm stressed, I breathe, I feel better in the moment. And the biofeedback uh, really allows for that sense of, I can look at my anxiety, I can really get clear about where my breathing is, how fast my heart rate is, I can tolerate that first and foremost because I know, I've seen again and again that I have the capacity to intervene, to make this better. Um, and very rarely do people get that feedback. You know, so often, many of our patients who do a fitness program in the midst of their addiction program, they get so excited about seeing the weight loss, seeing the muscles build, and you know, when we're doing therapy, it's a less tangible thing that uh, the improvements are less tangible and we have to kind of pull back and really look. But when they're, you know, when they're concurrently losing weight and building muscles, the excitement is all about, we will be like, you have six months of sobriety. You know, and they're like, yeah, but look at this muscle and I've lost 30 pounds. We need the tangible that says I've done this. I've, I, and I have a sense of capacity. Um, and, um, and that's what the, I, from, that's what I've seen in the biofeedback is this real sense of, I see numbers change mm -hmm. and, and therefore I have a sense of confidence that I can do this, not only in the quiet of the gym, uh, when no one's there, I can do this, uh, at game time when I am stressed, it's okay for me to look, it's okay for me to come in because I can intervene. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, the process is uh, very, very seamless as far as the kind of uh, logistics side. Um, send in your invoice. You'll get the IOMs. Uh, order your iPads or your computers. And it's super easy to set up, super easy to get everything kind of going on the technical side. The support at Unite is fantastic. Um, very, very responsive. Um, always available to answer any questions. So if any glitches do come up, they're always accessible, which is wonderful. I think as far as implementing on the patient side and on the clinic side, um, I'd recommend that the people, uh, the staff, uh, the clinicians uh, working to implement this, try it themselves so that they can see what it's like. 
um, so that they have the buy-in to be able to say, yeah, it was hard for me at first. And then I sat with it and I watched my numbers and it's so useful for patients to hear me, you know, the doctor, right, say, yeah, I looked at my score and then it went down. I went to like a 20 and I got all, you know, agitated that I couldn't regulate my numbers. And then I sat with it and I watched and I noticed what, you know, where my brain went and I, and then I could find my rhythm. And, and so I think that that um, personal touch um, of we're all humans, we all get anxiety. We all uh, can get anxious noticing. We all have the capacity to regulate um, can be very helpful. And then the other P and because of that, if, if the staff and the clients, I mean, if the staff and the clinicians have the buy-in, then it becomes something that, something that you uh, believe in and that there's no, um, uh, uh, it's not a, if you want to do this, you know, for our groups, it's, you start the group in biofeedback, that this is an integrated part of our program, that this is what we do. Um, and so um, that can be really helpful because there usually is some resistance on the client side initially because it's, it's anxiety provoking to look and to start. It's a, again, a, bold, uh, bold yes. act, right. To, to, to start to look, to start to regulate and engage in this way. And so I think that the staff and the people implementing, um, to have the full buy-in to say, yeah, this is really useful to be able to have their own experiences of getting frustrated, watching their numbers go up and down and being able to help talk through what that's like and how, and to see the effect on the other side. You know, when we first implemented, I, I, did the program, you know, every morning for a month. And, you know, it was wonderful for me to start my day that way. And then I could share that and, or I could share my, you know, afterwards we would have a reflection in the group. What was it like for you? And the people who had been in the program longer, um, you know, often, you know, if they've been doing the biofeedback for longer, will often say, gosh, it felt so good. I feel so much better. And other people are like, it was horrible. It was so high. Could, my mind was all over the place. Right. And so, and to be able to have people to be able to process and feedback about it can be really useful. Um, and then having availability for individual patients. So even if cl clinicians aren't using groups, um, it's, it's been a wonderful resource for the patients that I see who don't want medications, who want to do deeper therapy, but are often flooded with anxiety to be able to either before or after their session, be able to have access to this. Um, and then many people want to get their own for home use or, you know, whatever the case may be, but, um, it's, it's a pretty seamless transition. And especially if you try it yourself and can see the benefit, um, you know, it's, it's not a hard sell. Uh, and so I, I, I think that's the one piece of it that um, is probably the biggest roadblock is patients being uh, apprehensive at first or being anxious, more anxious at first, knowing that, being able to coach them about that and having your own experience so that you can uh, you know, speak effectively about it.